Hey guys, it's Max. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at and comparing two MacBook Pros. Both of them are new models with Vega 20 graphics. One of them has an i7 processor and the other one has the i9, which costs $300 more. And we're gonna see, is it worth spending that extra money and find out which one is the best bang for the buck. Now, I previously tested the i9 model and I compared it to the other graphics cards and the other to see what kind of a difference we got. So if you to check that out you can click the card above and see that video but in this one i want to see does the processor make a difference now if you've been following along you'll know that apple refreshed these macbook pros in middle 2018 they put in six core processors they gave us the ability to have 32 gigabytes of ram uh, so that was really nice but there was a big controversy especially with the i9 overheating and i did a bunch of tests and comparisons and saw that there was no difference in going with the i7 or the i9 processor so spending 300 bucks extra and in fact in some tests it was actually slower so you spend more money and get worse performance now that's because of thermal throttling meaning the chips can't run at their full speeds because they get too hot fast forward to today the question we're answering is now with the vega 20 graphics that are much more powerful this is a huge improvement over what we previously had and the these graphics are actually more efficient so they put out less heat now is it worth getting in the i9 processor i really care about best bank for the bucks so we're going to take a look at a wide variety of uh, some benchmarks and some video editing tests with both Final Cut Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve. I'll show you guys the differences that we saw or differences that we didn't see. And at the end, I'll talk a little bit about some suggestions for those of you guys who don't want to spend this much money on MacBook Pro. All right, guys, so let's jump into it. And we're starting off with Geekbench 4 CPU tests here. In single core, the i9 is 11% faster. And in the multi-core, so this is six cores here, we're getting 9% faster results. Now let's take a look at Cinebench R15, which is a rendering benchmark more in line with video editing. It's just testing out the CPU. I did five runs and I averaged it out to get an accurate result. And here our i9 model gets an 8% higher score and it finishes off the fifth run running at 3.25 gigahertz compared to 3.1. So yes, we are getting more performance out of the i9. And this is a bigger difference than we saw in the past, most likely due to some upgrades in cooling or maybe the Vega graphics cards even when it's idling here in this test it gives it a little bit more headroom than we had in the past so next we're going to jump into some real world video editing results and see how these improvements in cpu and these new much better graphics are going to work together and see what kind of a difference we get but before that i want to give a big shout out to our sponsor for this video and that is skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in videography, photography, business, and more. It's available on Android and iPhone with the ability to download any course for offline viewing. So stop wasting time playing Candy Crush and expand your skills with Skillshare. I'm checking out the new DaVinci Resolve 15 color grading and correction class, which is really helpful. They also have a ton of filmmaking, drone, and video editing classes. Skillshare is hooking it up and giving away a free two month unlimited access trial to the first 500 people who click the link in the description box and after that it's only about $10 a month. I highly recommend joining their 7 million members, getting access to 25,000 classes and stepping up your game in 2019. All right, guys, so we're gonna start out with Bruce X, which is just available in Final Cut. And I don't always show the results to Bruce X because it mainly tests the graphics. But here we see a difference of zero seconds. We have 48 seconds for both laptops, no difference whatsoever. Now let's jump into stabilizing a 20 second 4K clip. In Final Cut, both laptops took the same exact amount of time and that is just eight seconds. That is blazing fast. The Vega 20 graphics card in this MacBook Pro really makes a huge difference to give you guys a reference point the iMac Pro takes 6.5 seconds so this thing is so close by the way if you guys want to see a comparison of the Vega 20 MacBook Pro against an iMac Pro click the subscribe button and enable those notifications and you guys will get to see that video I definitely think you guys want to check that out now with the other two programs here in DaVinci Resolve we have 18 seconds which is also very very fast very impressive but the same amount of time and in Premiere Pro uh, the i7 model the $300 cheaper model takes two seconds longer uh, to render this it takes way longer yes you save two seconds so uh, Vega 20 makes a huge difference 
i7 versus i9 does not make a huge difference yet. Now let's jump into a five minute 4K project with two LUTs and film grain applied. In Final Cut, the i7 is two seconds slower. In DaVinci Resolve, we see 11 seconds slower. And in Premiere Pro, uh, we get, I don't know, what is this, 13? 12 seconds slower. So yes, we're seeing a tiny bit of a difference, but it really is negligible. And as far as timeline smoothness, when you're editing, there is no difference. So now let's make it a little bit harder. We're gonna go in and test out Canon Cinema Raw Light footage from the C200. This thing is very difficult. So here you guys see the results for Final Cut, uh, for DaVinci Resolve, and for Premiere Pro. So once again, uh, the i7 model is very, very slightly slower. And if we look at timeline performance in Final Cut, both laptops were able to play back this graded footage at 30 frames per second. In Resolve, both of them played it back at about 34 frames per second. So as far as the timeline performance, there was no difference. Now finally, let's finish off with 4.5K Red Raw footage. This is graded. And in our previous comparison with the 560X uh, and our 555X, the i9 was actually the slowest because when this test, we're like pushing the graphics card and the CPU to the limits and the i9 had to throttle down. So even though it was the most expensive, it was slower than even the base model MacBook Pro that costs thousands less. Uh, so here, thankfully, with the Vega 20 graphics, it's more efficient. Now, if you bought the most expensive of MacBook Pro, it's not the slowest. It is the fastest, but not by much. In Final Cut, we saved about 10 seconds. In Resolve, we saved about nine seconds. And in Premiere Pro, we saved about 19 seconds. So once again, basically we're seeing a trend here. Uh, yes, it's slightly faster, but the difference is very, very minor. And as far as the timeline performance, it is basically the same. I do wanna point out the frequencies that these laptops were running at at the end of our render in Final Cut. Uh, the i9 model was running at 2.9 gigahertz, whereas the i7 model was running at 2.85 gigahertz. So that's the small sliver of a difference we're seeing. So here the i7 actually has enough thermal headroom to run faster than the base, whereas the i9 is running at the base. I wanna point out that this i9 chip is actually a very nice chip, it's very powerful, but Apple should not be selling it in a laptop that's so thin and so light. Obviously they could do their own testing, they have so much employees, uh, they know that this chip is not capable of running at those speeds. So I really wish they weren't selling this i9. I think a lot of people are buying it and they don't know the difference. Uh, there's not a lot of people testing and talking about this, but that's what my channel is here for. Like I said, it is not worth getting the i9 model. Now for the rest of you guys, I also wanna throw in as far as best bank for the buck, what should you go for? First off, if you're not getting the Vega graphics, get the base 2.2 gigahertz processor. It runs at almost the same speeds as these other processors. If you're gonna upgrade anything, the first thing that I would upgrade if you do video editing is the graphics, upgrade to the 560 or if you can afford it, uh, the Vega 20, uh, of course, that jumps up your price and you have to get the 2.6 gigahertz i7 uh, and then upgrade you know, storage, whatever else you need and the CPU, keep it at either the base if you're not going with the Vega graphics or uh, the 2.6 gigahertz i7 if you are going with the Vega graphics. I think that's how you optimize your laptop and get the best bang for the buck. But if you're not doing very heavy video editing like C200, other raw footage, really pushing a lot of effects and layers, just go for the base MacBook Pro and I think you guys will be happy, especially if you're using Final Cut. So thank you guys for watching. Once again, a big shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Definitely go check it out. Sign up for a free uh, two month unlimited trial and get access to all of those classes. Uh, it definitely is a really, really great resource. I highly recommend it. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. Make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications enabled. Like always, I have links in the video description. You guys can go and check those out. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.